Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Biome Podcast, a space for nurturing the ecosystem of business, body, and living. What would it be like if you gave your body a leadership role in your business and chose greater happiness every day? These are the conditions that create a healthy biome and a thriving business. I'm your host, Heather Nichols, and I'm so happy you're here. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Biome Podcast. And it's Heather Nichols here, and we're going to talk this week. And in the next few weeks, I suppose I'm going to probably going to do a little bit of a series here on um, neurodiversity. And that's a big um, kind of buzz word, buzz topic lately. Um, And um, something that I've been exploring for quite a long time. And um, thanks to Access Consciousness and the X-Men body of work, um, I it was probably about, um, I don't know, 12 years ago in a class, um, an Access Consciousness class. And Gary Douglas, who is the founder, he asked me, have you acknowledged the difference that you be? And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm so normal and so average and so not different. And, um, and then of course I started to look at it and started to explore what he was inviting me to look at. And the beautiful thing about Gary Douglas is when he asks you a question, it, that question can just play out in your future for years. And it, it really did. It just like went into my future and started to like create all of these, you know, possibilities and all of this movement. And, um, and I, I started to look and look more and look more at, am I really different? How am I different? What does that even mean? What does that mean to me? What does that look like? And I started to realize that, wow, my brain functions differently. I function differently. And But what I had done is I had made myself really wrong about all of it. So I thought I was sort of normal and normal and wrong you know, good and normal and wrong. Kind of like everybody else, but also just like not that, not that great and, and just wrong. Like I didn't get a lot of things, you know, and I realized that, um, you know, growing up, I, I just, a lot of things didn't make sense to me. Um, How people would relate. I, I just, I remember like looking and being like, okay, so I guess this is how we do it. You know, trying to figure out how people were with each other because people tend to really relate based on judgment. Um, Almost everybody in the world has, you know, walks around with quite an enormous amount of judgment. Um, And I don't, I don't mean judgment in like, you can see judgment in like a very gross way, like, you know, very, obvious judgments of, you know, unkindness and all of that kind of stuff, like, like judging somebody as bad or wrong because of, you know, their skin color or their hair color or their gender or, but I'm talking about like all of these judgments that we function from on like the nature of reality and, you know, how things work and who we are and how we fit into that and how we fit into each other's worlds. And if you are too different than I you, you need to, I'm going to judge you to bring you back to a more comfortable place for me so that I don't have to be threatened by your difference. You know, all these judgments constantly going on in people's worlds. And I would watch, um, because I was very, very energetically aware as people that are neurodiverse are. It's one of the main kind of characteristics of what I would call an X-Men Um, somebody who is neurodiverse, neurologically diverse, functions differently, has a different brain function, different brain capacity. Um, One of the key elements of X-Men is that they are energetic, highly dynamically energetic in how they see the world, how they function, how they do things. But the world isn't energetic. I mean, it actually is totally, but the world doesn't acknowledge that about itself at all. So nobody is talking about that. Everybody is pretending like the energy isn't there, you know, and saying all kinds of things. And usually there's a lot of lying and dishonesty going on about what's actually occurring for people 
because they're not willing to be honest and they don't know about the energy. And then all the X-Men of the world are sort of like watching and going, I don't, this doesn't compute. Like this is not congruent with my experience. My experience of the energy doesn't match what's coming out of your mouth, you know? And so I would watch this and I would see that I could see the judgments that people function from when I was a kid. I mean, I still can, but I could see it and I would be like, okay, I don't understand that. I don't know how to do that. And that's one of the great things about X-Men is they don't know how, to, they don't really know how to do judgment. They learn it, they perceive it dynamically and they learn it. They adopt that way of being. But from, you know, who, who we be, who I, like for me, it's like from who I, if I'm really being me, I don't, I don't do judgment. I don't really function from that. Um, but I've learned it because it's somehow we've seen it as a way of, you know, that's like how we need to be in the world. And so, um, and so it, it, it becomes this, like what I saw for myself is that I started to like overlay all this kind of like using my very astute dynamic really spot on energetic awareness of the world and people and things and all of that, my, uh, the way I could just observe and see so many things going on simultaneously and so many realities. And I would take in all that information and then I would be like, okay, I need to adjust myself now to match that because otherwise I'm wrong. I'm different. I'm wrong. I'm different. I'm wrong. And, um, most X-Men, a lot of X-Men, probably, well, definitely most grow up, you know, with some sort of a version of that, basically adjusting yourself, learning how to diminish yourself, make yourself smaller, adjust yourself to fit in to, um, to this totally um, incongruent, energetically incongruent world that doesn't make sense to us in some in, in so many ways. And as we do that, we, we develop ourselves over time. We develop ourselves in our childhood and, you know, beyond that and in our relationships and businesses and with money and all these things, as we do that, it's like we erode, you know, the, your, your, your being, the, the brilliance of your being, who you are as a creature, it erodes over time. And, um, and it starts to like, it starts to just sort of diminish and, and, um, and get replaced by all this solidity and this sort of like fitting in that we do. And the thing is, is that the fitting in doesn't work because it doesn't, it's not you, it's not true for you. Um, but you know, we, we really, we really like, we use our dynamic capacities to make all of that work. And the funny thing is, and the, you know, I guess maybe not so funny thing, but the interesting thing is that X-Men are so capable of perceiving energies very, very dynamically, so astute, so aware, so fast, so dynamic, so intense, um, that, um, we're just like constantly taking it all in and making adjustments and taking it in and making adjustments and, and it's like this, this misuse of your capabilities because your capabilities are actually this being an energetic creature that doesn't judge, that doesn't define, that doesn't need rules, that doesn't do linearity, that doesn't do time, that doesn't do any of these, this stuff. Being this creature that is unique, that is one of a kind. And as you do that, you, um, you, you know, instead of like, learning how to bring that into the world and be that in the world and, you know, use that in the world. We, you know, we turn it down, turn it down, turn it down and use it against ourselves. And a lot of times, um, the, you know, X-Men tend to have a lot of stuff going on. Um, and this is part of why it, there's such a tendency to diagnose X-Men with ADD, ADHD, OCD, autism, mental illness, addiction, whatever it may be. Um, and I'm not saying that stuff isn't real because addiction is very real. And, you know, all those things are, are, are real, particularly when you're the person 
that's, you know, when that's going on for you, it's like, it feels extraordinarily real. Um, but there's this diagnosis and that like the whole world sort of then makes the person wrong. And then you, you, as the person, you're like, okay, well, I'm wrong. <laughs> somebody teach me how to be around here. You know, somebody teach me how to function around here. Um, and, and, and you basically throw out all of your capacities that you could use to create something far greater in the world and um, far different than what everybody else is up to. It's like, everybody's going right. You can go left. Like as X-Men, we are very good at going left when the rest of the world is going right. But what we do is we judge ourselves for that instead of going, that is my brilliance. Left is my brilliance, you know, and, and, and using that to create in the world a different reality, different business, different, you know, money flows, all those things. Um, because X-Men have this awareness of something that is so different. That's part of the diversity part of neurodiverse is that, you know, our neurodiversity, it's like, it's different. It's diverse. And diversity is, um, you know, it's a very valued thing in our world right now as a construct. Um, but I would say it's, it, I, I, for me, without all the judgments and the constructs put to it, diversity is absolutely valuable. And even if you look at the biome, um, the entrepreneurial biome, the biome, biome, um, the biome thrives with diversity you know, and you look at an earth ecosystem, it's going to really thrive with diversity. The more diversity you introduce into the system, generally speaking, the more, you know, the more robust, the stronger, um, the more, um, and well, the, the, that ecosystem becomes and the more it thrives um, in, in, in many ways. And so we, we, when we start to celebrate that diversity and, and the difference that we be and, and stop making it wrong and, you know, turn it on its head and get curious about what's right about me that I'm not getting a great question to ask. If you are an X-Men, if you are a neurodiverse creature, what's right about me, I'm not getting, um, what's right about this. I'm not getting, what are the capacities that I have that nobody else has that nobody else is aware of? What am I aware of that nobody else is aware of? And we start to, we start to function from those questions and ask those things. And we, um, we really, um, you know, we really like that, that. It's our curiosity that is one of our greatest superpowers, the ability to function from question that like opens up so many, so many different possibilities because you're, you have such a unique point of view as an X-Men, um, such a unique perspective. Literally nobody else in the world has your perspective or your point of view. And you use, but it, when you make it wrong and you judge it and you're like, I don't get it. So I'm going to need to learn how all these judgmental assholes are doing it, you know, instead of like, I have a different, I have a different awareness. Like there's a different possibility with all of this, you know, um, when you start to function from that, um, you become this shining difference in the world and at least in your own world, you know, you may not want to shine. Like you may want to be, you may be one of those people that likes to kind of not like be not as visible. Um, and you know, or maybe you do like to be visible. It's, you know, everybody's different, but but it's not even so much about how other people see you. It just becomes, you get to, you get to create a reality that works for you, a world that works for you, a life that works for you, business that works for you, a money situation that works for you. And, um, and it's in the wrongness. It's in all these places where we've decided that we're messed up, that you turn the stone over and you go, what's right about this? What's right about me in regards to this? And you're going to find diamonds. You're going to find so much brilliance there, but you have to turn the stone over to see, you know, what's like, whatever, like to see what's underneath it, you know, and what's underneath it is what we're hiding from ourselves, what we're hiding from the world, which is the brilliance of you, but it's different. Now, if we look at this with money, because I wanted to dive a little bit into money with this today, this is kind of like a 
let's just say an introduction. And then I don't really have like a plan because I'm really, if I make a plan, I guarantee you, I won't stick to it. <laughs> so let's not do that. Um, but I would like to do a few, like a little series here on, on X-Men um, and neurodiversity. Um, and so if we, so, so we will, you know, I, I'd like to do some stuff on bodies and parenting and business and money. So maybe we'll do that or like in relationships. So five part series, but I'm not playing. Maybe I'm making a plan. Don't, don't hold me to it. Cause you know, in five weeks, things are going to be very different. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, we'll see where we go with this. It's going to be chaos. Um, but let's look for a minute at the topic of money because, uh, a lot of X-Men really have this sense of like, I just can't even, you know, I can't even do, um, I can't do money. Like, I don't know. I don't get it. You know, I don't, I just don't get how it works. Um, and for a long time, and I still sometimes I'm like, I just, what, like, huh, what is this thing? You know, it's like so ridiculous, you know? Um, but that's, but that's because money is an invention. It's just something that we made up. It's not of the, I mean, it's everything's of the earth, but it's like, to me, what makes so much sense is nature, how nature works. That's why my podcast is about the biome because that makes sense to me. Um, and you know, it's fun to kind of extrapolate that into how we, you know, how we move in the world, um, and how we create with business and things like that. But, but money has never made sense to me. Um, but it's just always, for me, it's, it's kind of just always been there. Um, and I never really thought about it until I started thinking about it. You know, I, I never really, it was just kind of like, well, yeah, it's there, you know, um, that was, but that was part of my capacity with it. Not everybody has that. I get that. Like, but, I, but it's so funny because we have whatever we like, whatever we know about something and then we all of a sudden we realize that that's different. And then it's like, we start to look around and be like, well, I guess I should have adopted that point of view, that point of view, that point of view, that way of being, that way of being, because obviously these people know more than I do. They're better than me. They're smarter than me, you know? And, um, and so then we, we have to start to, um, you know, we start to like adopt these ways of being that are not, they're, they're like completely irrelevant to us. They may, they don't make any sense. Like they're not, they're not you, you know? And so with money, um, it's, and it, because it's not real, it's, it's, it's a construct. I mean, it is real It's of this reality, but it's, it's a construct. It's an invention. It's just something that everybody in the world happens to align and agree upon the, the, you know, the existence of money, the significance of money, how it works, how it doesn't work, you know, the, and there's so many points of view about money. There's probably more points of view about money than anything else in the world. Um, and it's like, you know, I mean, but the, I could say the same about bodies and sex and, you know, parenting and relationships. It's like so heavy, so laden with so many points of view. And so X-Men are very, 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 very aware of that. And, referencing ourselves against it, you know, and that, this is what I did. It was just like, okay, so money, it's a thing. I don't know anything about it because I'm just a kid. You know, I didn't, I wasn't born as a being who's had other lifetimes, who's, you know, has awareness about money. Um, just kidding. Um, but that was my point of view as a kid. I didn't really consider that. So it was just like, I'm an idiot. I don't know about this, you know, so I need to learn and, you know, from the people around me. And so we, we, you know, we just learn, we learn from the people around us. Nobody's asking us what we know. You're not curious about your capacities and you, you, you don't even consider that you could have awareness about this thing as a seven-year-old or a two-year-old or whatever from another lifetime or whatever, just being an infinite being who's willing to receive, which is a huge part of what brings money into our world. Um, so we just don't, you know, we don't, um, we don't really, um, we don't see that we could have capacities with it. And we look at the adults and we take the cues from them. We take on all their points of view and X-Men are, and, you know, neurodiverse creatures are 
very energetically mutable, malleable, like, and that's one of the greatest gifts of X-Men. It's actually one of the ways in which X-Men are so magical um, because we don't all like, when you're just really being you, like you don't have a definition of you. You don't, you, you're not a defined creature, but we do define ourselves to fit into the world. And then we shrink, we make things smaller, we make ourselves smaller. So the willingness to not be defined, to be, to function from a different space is, um, it's a very courageous choice because what do you do? How do you, how do you do business? How do you do money from that point of view? Well, you do it from question. You do it from awareness. You do it from what do you know? You do it from your capacities, which you've probably never seen before, you know, in anybody else because they're unique to you. So you have to be willing to go on this adventure of discovery through being the question, asking the question, exploring questions about all of these things that um, we just don't, we, nobody teaches us to do as children, you know, unless you've grown up with the tools of access consciousness, which is, you know, not, not many adults have, and it's been around for 30 years. Um, so, you know, you, you just, you, nobody is inviting or something similar. It doesn't have to be access, but like something where someone's really curious about what, you know, inviting you to explore what, you know, even when you're five, seven, you know, 10, whatever seeing, seeing, being seen as an infinite being. Um, and so we give up all of that. We give up everything we know, you know, or so much of what we know. And we start to like, we, we just like bury all of these capacities that we have. We just bury them in favor of fitting in nobody noticing how different we are. Nobody noticing how messed up we are. Nobody noticing how clueless we are. And this is, a, this is one of the big ones that I used to do is because I really just had this point of view of like, I am an idiot. Like I, and I still, honestly, I still do. I'm still getting over that one. Um, it's a lot better than it used to be, but I definitely am still, I just have realized lately, like, wow, I, I still have some of that. So I'm working that out, you know, as we speak, um, but it's, and it's so insidious, you know, because the, like, my joke is always that like the whole world is in agreement that X-Men are, are, um, you know, clear or wrong. Basically the X-Men think they're wrong and the, the other rest of the world thinks that they're wrong as well. <laughs> so everybody's pointing the fingers at the wrong, the wrong X-Men in the, in the, in the room, you know, um, everybody's in agreement about that. So we have to be, it's a very courageous choice to be willing to be different in the face of all of that and be like, I, yeah, no, actually I, I, I'm not actually wrong. I just am really, really, really different, you know? And, um, and if you can, you know, if you can, if you've created things with those capacities that match the definitions of what it is to be successful in the world, um, then, you'll get, you know, you may get praise for that. You may get acknowledged for that. You may get accolades for that, whatever. But um, when you're aware of something that's just so different, so different, um, you're probably not going to get anybody, you know, cheering you on in that, unless you've got some really cool people in your life, which, you know, hopefully you do. Um, but, uh, because everybody believes in the lies of this reality. Everybody believes. And if you look at money as an example, it's like everybody believes in the structure of it, the form of it, the linearity of it, the right and wrong of it. There's different, you know, people that would give you different indicate in different ways about like, you know, the, um, the, um, uh, you know, like different aspects of finances and stuff. Like there's definitely a, a variety of points of view about how you do finance, right? And how you create wealth and all of that stuff. Um, but the basic, you know, ideas around the rightness and wrongness around money are embedded in our world. And we pick them up, we carry them around. They're not ours. We're just aware of them. And you forego your capacities. And as you do that, um, it's like, that's probably going to create some sort of a financial rub in your world. You know, that may, it may be 
it may uh, for a lot of people it shows up as lack like lacking the point of view that they lack money um but it could also be maybe you have an abundance of it but you don't really know what to do with it or you're feel very disorganized with it or it's all over the place or you you know are draining your bank account because you're not quite sure how to handle it or you don't trust yourself or there's all these so many points of view underneath about the wrongness of you the wrongness of you the wrongness of you the wrongness of you rather than like, I'm different. I'm not wrong. I'm different. I'm not wrong. I'm different. Say it with me. I'm not wrong. I'm different. <laughs> um, and the only way to really start to get to uncover the brilliance of that is to be in the question and really be asking, okay, if I'm not wrong, if I'm different, what is different about me that I'm not getting? What is right about me that I'm not getting? What is unique about me that I'm not getting? What is the unique awareness of money and finance and wealth that I have that nobody else has? And are you willing to go with that, to move with that? Um, it's an interesting time right now because, of course, there's some, you know, economic downturn that seems to be happening in the world. Um, and the interesting thing is that when that occurs, um, you know, everybody jumps on board, like everybody starts to have points of view about it. And it's economy economics is such an like fascinating psychological phenomenon because it, there isn't, it's like the, the money in the world like circulates and, you know, it just starts to move in a different way. It's not like there's, it's gone, you know, um, it just starts to move in a different way. Um, and if you don't take the point of view and you don't jump in, jump on the bandwagon and take the point of view, Oh, wait a minute here. You know, um, if you don't take the point of view of like, I'm going to be, I'm going to have less money. I'm going to, you know, suffer the effects of the, depression or the recession or whatever you want to call it. Um, but if you don't take that point of view around it, then you're not at the effect of it. And this can be a little challenging to do because it's very dominant. Like money stuff in the world is very dominant as a, you know, overarching kind of, um, you know, like the, the, the energy is very, it's very loud. Right. And so if you're energetically aware you're, you're going to pick that up. You know, you're going to just be constantly barraged with that and you think it's true and you add your energy to it and you make it even more substantial and more real. Um, but if you are willing to be present enough, vulnerable enough, like have your barriers down enough and have your, like get, not be in the, not be like swept into the judgment of it instantaneously, like a lot of people do and just be in this, be in the curiosity, you know, of all of it, um, then, um, it's, it's like you, you can start to use all of it to your advantage. Every, everything that's going on, because again, everybody's going right. Everybody's going right. I'm, I'm in a depression. I'm in a recession. I'm in the downturn. The money's going down, the money's going down, the money's going down. And everybody goes down that road. And if you're like, Oh, what's, like, bye guys, you know, <laughs> cause you're going left. Cause you probably just go left by your very nature, you know, or whatever, like in the opposite way that everybody else is going or a different way up, down, you know, backwards. I don't know. Um, and, but if you're willing to, um, to, to, to look and see the whole, the whole crowd going this way and be like, I am not like doing that. Like, why would I do that? You know? Um, and then you're like, but there's, I could go this way, 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 you know, as an X men, you've got this universe of possibilities available to you from your being, from your energetic, um, capacities, your energetic savvy, your energetic strength, your energetic awareness, your energetic being you've got all that going on. You start to ask questions, not buying into the point of view, downturn, struggling economy, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, 
well, what else is possible here? You know, and this is where being an idiot is great. Like I actually, I, this is one of the places where I really allow myself to use that as a capacity because I do, because that point of view I mentioned a little while ago where I'm like kind of an idiot in a lot of ways. Um, meaning like, I just don't get, I'm clueless. You know, I feel very clueless a lot of the times, <laughs> but I, I, and I really, it's something I work with every day to not make wrong because I just don't get a lot of the ways that the world works, how, I, how business works, how money works. Like I don't get it. I really don't get it. And but when I see that as my capacity, I see that as my strength, I see that as the beauty of me, you know, and I, and I, I see that I've got awareness of a million other possibilities that other people just are not looking at, then I, it's like all these ideas come, you know, it's like the willingness to be different and the willingness to honestly use it to your advantage. Quite, I mean, that's really basically what I'm saying. This happens to me a lot, like when I'm like in an airport, let's say, and like, I'll, I'll notice this a lot where like people will be this. Okay. This is a funny phenomena. I think this is hilarious. Okay. So at the Denver airport, I have clear, which is a, I might've even talked about this before. I feel like I've maybe said this on another podcast, but I think it's hilarious. So clear is a service that you pay for that, you know, you get, you, you skip the line basically. The idea was that you skip the line, you jump to the front of the line with clear. They don't, you have to pull out your ID. They, you know, do the fingerprints and all that stuff. And you, you know, they verify your ID and they push you to the front of the line. Well, the funny thing is lately at the Denver airport, the clear line is the longest, <laughs> which is hilarious to me. Um, and I'm like, what, what, like, what are you guys doing? You know? Um, and so I'll walk up to the line and like in the TSA section, the pre-check section, you know, the clear line will be really long and the TSA regular TSA line will be just like, not even there's no line, you know? And all these people are waiting in the clear line because they've paid for the service for clear. So they're going to use clear, <laughs> but I'm like, but you guys, there's no line over here. <laughs> like, so what if you have to pull out your ID, you know? Um, and, um, and so this happens to me all the time where I'll be like, I'm going to go to where the line is the shortest, you know? I mean, I'm going to ask a question. Like I'm going to, you know, if it's like a, a very clear, like that's not going to work, then I don't, you know, but it's like, I'm pragmatic about it, you know? And I'm like, I'm going to go to the shortest line, but the rest of the world is lining up for clear because they have clear because <laughs> clear is supposed to get you through faster, but it's not going to this time. It's going to get you through a lot slower, but people don't even see it. And so it's like that, like that's an example of how this works where you're, and the thing that's funny about it is it's so obvious. Like to me, I'm like, this is so obvious. Like why are you waiting in line when you don't have to be, you know? Um, but people are half asleep, you know, people are checked out. They're not, you know, they're not really there. I am. I'm always there. I'm, I'm super aware, super engaged, like uh, super observant, noticing everything, X-Men capacity, neurodiversity, neurodivergent capacity, like downloading information, energetics, awareness, people, their bodies are giving you information all the time. Like there's so much that's going on and um, that can be debilitating. If you learn how to get into the curiosity of your strength, your brilliance, your capacities, if you learn how to use it to your advantage, if you learn how to ask questions, if you learn how to realize that it's not yours, if you learn how to flip everything on its head and lots and lots and lots of other tools, um, then you get to use all of that to your advantage. And in an economic downturn, you're like, there's a million other possibilities here. Which one would I like to choose? And then you use your energetic spidey senses and your, you know, capacities 
to be like, hmm, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. And you start to create a different reality with business. You start to create a different reality with finances. And it's all through the exploration of the energies um, and the willingness to be different. And if you're not willing to be different, you're going to get in that clear line. You're going to be like, well, everybody else is doing this. So there must be a reason. And that's what we do. We go, well, there must be a reason why everybody's here. So I'm going to follow the I'm going to follow the, uh, the whole world going into the depression or the recession. I'm going to just follow that because there must be a reason that I don't know that I'm not aware of because I'm not smart. <laughs> I do. I know not of which I speak. I just hear that this is how it goes for people. <laughs> um, instead of being like, no, the reason is, is that people are actually not smart. And I am. <laughs> Everything is the opposite of what it appears to be. So I'd like to use this to my advantage, please. How can I do that, universe? How can I do that? You know, ask the questions, perceive the perceive the possibilities for creation that only you can perceive, only you can choose, only you can create. And go in that direction. Go in that direction. And you will find that depression, recession, blah, blah, whatever is going on in the world, it's going to affect you so much less. And, you know, it doesn't mean that you're exempt from everything. And if you're not, you're wrong or you're not doing it right. That's a definitely a slippery slope. And I've definitely gone down that myself. I know that well. Um, but it does mean that you, you as an X-Men, if you are an X-Men, all the X-Men listening, probably the only ones still here at this point. Um, you, you are aware of totally different possibilities and you have the capacity to choose them and bring them to reality. And so what are you waiting for, darlings? Like, what are we waiting for? It's time for the neurodiverse people of the world to be the ones that are leading the world into different possibilities, leading the world. Hey guys, guess what? You don't have to go down the road of depression, recession, war, struggle, political, you know, impossibility, you know, you got to vote for the least of two, the lesser of two evils. No, you don't. No, you don't. There's other possibilities out there. <laughs> Not going to get too far into that, but let's just say there aren't only two candidates in the U S election. <laughs> Um, so, um, so, you know, but, but as a, when you're willing to be different, you're willing to choose that and, and not buy into the whole, well, you have to vote either one because you got to vote for the lesser of two evils. No, 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 you don't. I am like, that's not the world I want to live in. Is that the world you want to live in? That's not the world I wish to keep perpetuating. And as X-Men, we are powerful. We are capable we are so potent and so aware and so smart and so like dynamic that what if you really gave yourself the gift of functioning from that and as that and creating from that space? Because that is a way, way, way more fun, way more fun than all the other alternatives. And, um, you know, it requires courage and the willingness to be different. And I've kind of addressed some of that already. But I mean, what, what the alternative again is like, you know, being a cow, like being in the herd, you know, just get, moo going to the right with everybody else. Okay. Depression, recession. Okay. Lesser of two evils. Okay. You know, and that doesn't work for X-Men. It makes us, it, it like erodes your being even more. So what are you capable of uniquely that you've never considered, that you've never looked at, that you could choose now and create from now that would create not only a greater life for you, but a greater world. And that's really where X-Men are most interested in playing, you know, is in, is in doing something that's way bigger than us. Um, not big in scale, like it has to be a big thing, but just creating a future because that's a capacity of X-Men as well. Um, so I am in the month of March, I'm going to be, I'm really excited. I'm doing a back-to-back, -back, um, sort of back-to-back two-day X-Men disabilities or abilities class. That's it's, it's two days, but it's four days. I know it's kind of weird. 
Um, but it's uh, it's online, so it's spread out over like less time per day, more days. Um, starting on my birthday, March twelfth, um, and then uh, business on different class the following week on the twentieth, which is also over. I don't know how many days, four days, I think, as well. Um, and it's going to be on Zoom as well. And um, I love the combination of those two classes because they really, you get this, like, you get to, like, get into the difference of you with the X-Men class and really get out of the, like, get out of judgment of you, which is a huge gift of that class. Start to see your capacities, start to see how your brain works and see it as a gift rather than a burden. Um, and um and then taking that into a business conversation, you know, where you get to really be that difference in business with money, with how you create, with how you are with your team, if you have a team or whatever you're creating in the world, such a dynamic combo. So you are invited to come and play. It's on my website, heathernichols.com on the events page slash, I think it's slash classes or slash events. See, I don't know these things. Just go to my website. You'll find it. Um, and we'd love to have you come and play. So um, I'll be back next week for another, I'll do something else on X-Men and neurodiversity. Um, what what that will be, je ne sais pas. <laughs> no sé. But we will find out when we find out. So thanks for being here, everybody. Have a great day, week, all of those good things. And um, just thank you for being you. Thank you for being here on the planet right now at this beautiful time. Thank you for joining me for the Entrepreneurial Biome Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. For more resources, check out my website at heathernichols.com and my social media channels as well. Have a beautiful day and remember that your business thrives when you do.